Welcome back, my friends, to Hermitcraft. My name is Tango of the Tech Variety, and this behind me is a tiny little project we call Decked Out. Now, if you're new here, Decked Out is a season-long project that is pretty much uh, devouring my soul. It's the, it's the largest thing I've ever done in Minecraft. But it is fun. It is so much fun working on this project. Last episode, we built everything. We built this entire level two of the dungeon, and it turned out absolutely fantastic. I'm incredibly excited about it. And this episode, we just we need to do more. I hope that's okay, because I'm kind of excited, and I want to get this project done, and I really want people to start playing it. And one of the issues I've had while working on this mega project, I mean, I don't even want to say issues, but one of the, I guess, inefficiencies, if you will, one of the things that's been kind of stumbling me a little bit is I've been kind of just working on little pieces here and there of decked out, like, oh, I'll go work on this thing over there, and now we'll do some building, and then and then maybe we'll do some redstone, and it's, I want to change that. I want to change that. I want to change how I work on this game. Instead, my goal now is to get to the minimum viable product, the MVP, if you will. I want to basically say, hey, I'm playing decked out, and as soon as I can't play decked out, I'm going to do the thing that is preventing me from playing decked out, the minimum viable product. And to me, that means I wanna be able to put my shulker box into the thing, I wanna go into the dungeon, I wanna get a compass, I wanna explore the dungeon, I wanna find my artifact, I wanna bring it to the exit, I wanna maybe, I, I don't even know if the, if the end shop is part of the minimal, and I want to get out of the dungeon and then from there we'll just start adding more so what this means is we need to start from the beginning okay the entrance to deck out deep frost citadel I mean we're gonna to get to building some of that someday but the flow right you come into the game you claim one of these rooms here in this amazing great hall here you come up here with your your key or whatever it is and then this right this I just kind of scrub this garbage in right here and I want to start making this a little bit more realistic like I think the idea is you put your key there it opens the door you come in here you sleep in the bed you open this door here you put your shulker in the thing and then you take what I think is going to be a minecart ride because to get from here down to here well that's a process that is a process that we need to fix and I think what I want to do is have a minecart ride that kind of comes through here and drops you off right here to get from here all the way up to the surface we're gonna have them take a minecart ride down, 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 down through some ice tunnels and everything and it boops them off and then boom right here and maybe like some ominous sound plays as they're about to begin their adventure but you know what i am most excited about i am incredibly excited this episode big announcement i have the official decked out cards that's not them decked out cards ready to go right here i'm going to be showing you at least 18 if not more of these cards we're going to put them on the boards we're going to show you all the icons all the art what it all means spread out throughout this episode and here we go here we go a little update i kind of did some of the, this is this is nothing right here i want this to be much more like i'll probably put like a big archway and make it all evil looking and stuff but that's probably gonna come when i do this shop and i've got to do this whole interior here but but i did do the inside of this now so here's the process right you put your key in uh and then this door will probably just open automatically there probably won't be a button here but you go into this first room here okay uh let's see here you got a bed to sleep in Sleep in the bed, remove all gear. I put a couple of chests here that can both be opened here. I, that should probably be skulk up there. Yeah, this is basically like your pre-room where you take off all your stuff and get ready and stuff. Uh, this right here, exit only, this is where you will come out. So there's no way to get through this door this way. It's an exit only door. This is where you'll come out after a successful run. Uh, when you're down in the dungeon and you leave the dungeon and you go to the little post shop and you spend your embers and stuff and you come up here, the minecart will drop you off inside there and you'll be able to come out here. Right here now, shulker deck will be in barrel when run is over. This is this is something that took a little bit of thought because it's really there's two ways to end the game. There's a, a successful run where you take the minecart ride back out and you come out here, and then there's the I, I died. You know the ravager ate my 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 eyeballs. And when the ravager eats your eyeballs, I need to know right away. So I think what I'm going to do it's not there yet, but I think I'm going to put a skulk sensor right below here. Uh, you know, hooked up to a shrieker or something so that I could tell when a player enters this room. And essentially, anytime someone enters this room, the game is off. The game is not on. So the first time you come in, it'll it'll detect it. And that's fine. It'll, the game's already off, right? When you come out of here, 
the game will already be off because I can detect it much earlier, but it's really the case of when you die that I need to immediately turn the game off right there because what I need to do now, this is different than decked out one. Decked out one, right? Like we would process your cards and your, your, your deck of cards was ready to go. I could return to you when it was waiting for you when you came out. In decked out two here, the cards are still processing. Like you might die and a card might've just been processed and I gotta wait for that card to return to the barrel. I gotta package the, the, the shulker box up. I gotta I gotta send it all the way up here. So it may be a good 30 seconds before your 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 shulker box is is back here. So maybe I'll need a light or something. I don't know. To be to be worked on right here. But once you're all happy here, you go through this door here and then you enter this room here. This is obviously your your shulker drop-off room here. Added a little bit of lighting here. There's a kind of an empty wall here. We may we may do something with this wall. I, I don't know, but there's a little bit of space there if necessary. But obviously the the big thing here is you place your shulker deck against the lamp here okay and now if this is working like we'll pretend this is my shulker deck of cards here what should happen if i did this correctly is boom boom it eats your shulker right away i don't like that you can kind of see through that but whatever whatever right it takes your shulker your shulker is now gone it's gone on its way and it's it's being sent down to the game. It's being shuffled, it's, it's, it's getting ready to go. Your permanent cards are being processed, that sort of thing. Over here now, we've got this card, that, this, this little guy that pops out here. You get in here and there's a button. I may need to light this up a little bit more or something. And then you skadoodle on your way and you go through here and stuff. And we got a little bit of janky redstone in the back here and you can see this is your shulker box. So it falls out right there. This will lead down, like I said, all the way down to the card processor that we built in the past here. You, however, will head down here. And this is going to be a, a rather interesting ice tunnel minecart ride. And I wanna do a couple interesting things here and you can see we already got some redstone set up here. Uh, well, how's this gonna work, right? You're gonna come down this minecart track and this is all gonna be, you know, decorated and everything. The, ca the cavern's gonna be much wider and everything. Uh, but you're gonna be coming down this track right here and everything's look gonna look like you're gonna head into a room over there. But instead, you're gonna hit this detector rail here, which you can barely see coming down here. You're like, and when, the, when you're in a minecart, you're probably not even gonna notice that little thing. But you come down here and what's gonna happen is it's gonna drop you into a hole, okay? We we got a, I got a little circuit set up here, a little ABBA switch here, which is going to basically work these two sticky pistons here. This one's gonna go first. Uh, this is the A, It's gonna, these are both one tick pulses. So it's gonna pull the rail back and then this guy is gonna pull the ice block back that way. Now, I had to, I had to split these in different directions because if I tried to pull them both in the same direction, the rail just popped off and then I started making rail dupers and we all know that ain't happening. So what happens is this rail essentially gets put over there and then this guy gets put over there and then, oh look, oh look, a drop 40 blocks down. But the problem is that that's not really enough. Just opening up a block like that, the minecart like sometimes fall down there, but most of the time it kind of skadoodles right across and gets stuck on this. So what I want to do here is you see, you see I got two regular pistons here. I want to fire these guys, push over this way. This will push this block over here and the ice block there. And then now you have a nice flat surface for you to bump your face on and then fall down the hole. And then like a split second later, this uh, will just push it all back. So I think we're going to have a nice little completely hidden minecart dropper operator here that uh, is going to drop you down there. It's going to be kind of fun. Okay, it is time to reveal the first cards and begin talking about them. I'm incredibly incredibly excited they're they're actively being developed like minute to minute as I'm making this episode. I have 30 of them now, which is I'd say 90% of the cards we're going to launch the game with. We'll see. We'll see. Couple things. First, one, thank you so much to Moselbop, the one who has made he made all the artifacts which I showed you guys long before. He's now making all the cards, doing an absolutely incredible job and being incredibly responsive to my all nitpicking needs and everything. So just thank you so much, Mosel. The second thing I want to say is ignore all the numbers you're gonna see. Just pay attention to contents or like the concepts of the cards right now. Just the numbers are all gonna change, the costs and everything. Some of them aren't even filled in, so bleh, it doesn't even matter. Okay, here we go this is the style of the card this is the first card it is sneak and you can see we we, we debated long a long time about what style we want to go with and then this silhouette style here with a artistic style background really hit home and I, I liked it the people I talked to liked it so here we are this is the card and now look I gotta I gotta show you the back first of all it looks amazing you guys see the texture on the back Mm-hmm. That's the decked outdoors on the back. Absolutely love it. And here we go. I'm gonna pop this guy 
in there. That is the first card. Okay, now there's some things to talk about here, right? The silhouette of the guys, obviously just the art, the background doesn't really mean much. The border, okay? There's two types of borders. There's this border here, which is kind of like the thinner border. That just represents it's a normal card. Some of the other cards, which you're gonna see one now, is a permanent card. And if you guys remember, the permanent cards are the ones that are played immediately and their effects stay in effect throughout the entire course of the game. So regular cards right here, right now they have this, this little icon here that's probably gonna go away, I think. But normal cards just have this thin border. Now, there's also three colors of the borders. There's gray for common, green for uncommon, Blue, I think, yeah, blue for rare and purple for legendary. Okay, we're trying to iconify and colorize a lot of the effects in these cards. So this is a very basic card here called Sneak, and all it does is it blocks one clank, you, okay? That symbol right there, that's the blocks clank symbol, and you can see the number one on it. So when you play this card, it will block the next clank that you generate. This number down here, this is the cost. This card, you know, I just threw in temporary numbers, seven embers, the blue with the little, little drippy thing, that's the frost ember icon. Remember frost embers? are things that drop throughout the dungeon as you're exploring and they're very valuable because they're a lot they allow you to purchase these cards at the end of the game and also as a reminder the artifact you're getting is where you get most of your embers so if you get your artifact and you make it out you trade your artifact into the shop at the end you get a ton of embers plus whatever other embers you found throughout that uh, dungeon run. So there we go, that is card number one. Card number two, I'm showing some of the basic cards right now. This one is a Treasure Hunter, another common card. Okay, the art is just so good, so good. And this one drops four coins somewhere in the dungeon. Again, ignore the number four, that number may tweak based on how effective this is and stuff. But essentially, this is a card that when played, it will release coins into the dungeon for you to try to pick up because coins you can take them to the shop outside the dungeon and buy things outside the dungeon run that improve your next dungeon run aren't these just amazing i absolutely love them okay third card we have ember sense okay obviously frost embers we're talking about you know uh what was that talking about? Oh, frost embers we're talking about cost how good frost embers are how important they are this one will drop two frost embers in the dungeon for you to try to find so very similar to treasure hunter except and it does frost embers instead of coins. Other than that, they're, they're kind of the same concept, but again, frost embers are gonna be way more valuable. And then card number four, this is our first permanent card here, okay? Uh, what I'm doing is to control the difficulty of the game, you control the difficulty of your run by what cards you put in your deck. And there's some of these uh, permanent cards. You see this icon right here with the little stairs and the number five next to it. That that stairs represents a, a value that I'm calling delve, like a dungeon delve or a deeper delve. It's basically your difficulty. The higher this value in the sum of your deck, the lower your artifact will likely be in the dungeon. So this is going, you, know, you start out with like a zero delve and your, your artifact will probably be right up on level one somewhere. But but as you start adding cards that have this delve value in it with the stairs icon, you're gonna get artifacts that are lower and lower in the dungeon. But to go deeper in the dungeon, first of all, it's gonna be difficult, but it also comes as a cost. This one is going to generate one clank when it's played. So you're gonna, and because permanents are played right away, that clank is gonna be generated right away before you even enter the dungeon, but it allows you to go deeper and get more artifacts so that you can hand in for more frost embers. Okay, there we go, that is wave one. We have many, many more cards to show you and I can't wait. Okay, I have been busy. The ice tunnel is done. It looks amazing. But before I show that to you, we had to meet up with a Mr. A B Double Doinker because he is gonna do a build for us inside Decked Out. There he is. Hey, how you doing Moss Man? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I am. I am excellent. I'm excellent. Uh, are, we, are we here for a little business? I hope it is a business meeting. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. Yes. No friendship. Pure. Of course business. not. Of course not. Of course not. Yes. Yeah, down to business immediately. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so you know why you're here, right? I need, I need something built and I'm trying yes. to farm out some of the, uh, some of the pieces to some of the talented builders on the server oh okay Thank so if God. you know I, any I, just have them come yeah. on over here and let me know that i'm looking for some help yeah okay yeah i'll, I'll talk to scar <laughs> great meeting <laughs> thanks i appreciate it no 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 no. you I, I need you i need you all right you ready okay you got your rockets yes. all right follow me it's, it's a precarious flight rockets. 
Oh, great. You made, I made it. it. You made it. I okay. Made it. I don't even know Ooh. if I have a way in here yet or something. Here we go. Right, 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 right. Dude, you have done a lot. There's been a lot of work done. Yeah. <laughs> a lot Holy of work cow. has been done. Yeah. Level two is completely built. Is, is this because people are saying, oh, deck daft should be done soon? It's because I'm saying that. It's because I'm saying that. Because I started this project. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I started it like was it, was it five months ago. I don't know. Yes. And, yes. You know, with the crossover and holidays and time linger, I gotta get it done. I gotta, I gotta do. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's why, true. We all know good food takes time. This is true. Yes. Yeah. And this is gonna be a good it's, meal. I, I hope so. I hope so. All right. Yes. Are you ready for a little? Uh, I'm not gonna show you the whole thing because you're a player sure, here. Sure. So you know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You come over there. I'll, I'll close my eyes. Yeah, okay. Down through the mushroom forest. Come on now. <laughs> it's beautiful. A little crystal, crystal cave over there. And then here, this is the focal point of the whole level. Ooh. This guy right here. The idea now is, and, and we've had this conversation before, and, and you disappointed yes. me, right? You, you've never seen the Goonies, have you? <laughs> no. And no. end the video. End the video. Oh, okay. yep. no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. You should really watch it. I mean, it's it's a classic. It's a classic. I'll watch it. Okay. I'll watch it before I do this. At the end of the Perfect. movie, at the end of Goonies, they un they discovered this, uh, you know, this underwater... <laughs> <laughs> this underwater lake just like this and sure, uh, yeah 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 there's nothing weird going on here right at all yeah no <laughs> they, they discovered this underwater lake and there was a boat like a pirate ship in the back of the lake and it was kind of like it, it was a big part important movie anyways i want to have a an old kind of pirate ship back here i'm thinking Ooh. Now let me see. Let me let me scope out a little area here. There's yeah. not that much area here, right? So let's see. Right. Like that yeah. could be yeah. the front of the boat, and the mm -hmm. back of the boat could come like you know over, whatever, somewhere like this. Still good size. It's decent. It's decent, and you you should have the height to go. You know, feel free to go pretty close to the ceiling and stuff. With some masks and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the works. I only have one little little request: is that one you can get onto the boat and maybe explore it. Okay. okay, that would be good. Okay. You know, so if there are like little rooms, I know again, space is tight, but if there's little rooms or something like that, that'd be great. Um, okay. And then the front of the boat, somewhere around here, it would be ideal, not necessary, but ideal if there were like little trap doors that I could redstone control and flap down and behind them uh. are little skeletons, you know, deceased oh. pirates. For those that, uh. for those wayward travelers that think they can just swim right by the boat. Uh -huh. uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh. I think this will be great. This is um. I think we can do kind of like a a Disney trick in here as well. Where okay. Um, we do a little forced perspective. Okay. Thing. I love it. And yeah, it it goes without saying. Free reign. You know, the whole room, the whole dungeon, and you know anything you want to tweak or whatever is yeah. your palette. You you do what you. This is just the beginning of this room. If more needs to be done, that's great. If not, if it's just the boat and the boat looks great, so be it. Dude. Whatever you want. Okay? I don't know what else I could do in here. It's beautiful. <laughs> it looks really nice. The vines hanging down, gorgeous, beautiful. A little bit of light here and there, a little mm -hmm. glow, mm -hmm. very ominous. All it needs is a ship in the middle. I think so. I think you might be right. Yeah. yeah. Now, question. Okay. It's sunk. It's a it's a crashed ship, uh... right? Uh I mean, I hadn't or thought about that. I, I had thought I had assumed it would be floating, but if you think there's a good way to do it as crashed, I'm I'm I got I'm open to that. Well, I'm just thinking if it was like if if it's a sunk ship, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. then maybe it's a little more submerged underwater. Yeah, there's some options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, because I'm 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 trying to visualize this and have a hard time as well, but it could it, it could solve some of the redstone problem because it's actually on the bottom of this of the, the lake yeah 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 yes and you could have part of it is underwater you yeah know, to yeah. where they got i go like underwater it. to see i like it something. i like it and yeah. and the and the floor here if we need to we can lower the floor a little bit that kind of stuff too you know there's, there's flexibility here, yeah so. yeah freaking right dude all the redstone <laughs> around here one poke in this and it's over <laughs> no there's no redstone below here yet there will be later but yeah that hasn't happened yet. okay so yeah i'm super excited Eddie. no rush whenever like this could be done at at your leisure well, I mean, the game's going to be done next week, right? So I That's got what I've been days. told. Yeah, yeah. You got about five days until the launch of Decked Out. <laughs> okay, perfect. Perfect, no, perfect. No, Just no, kidding, no. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer, that was a joke. Not even close. Okay. Yeah. My bill will be in the mail.
Wait, 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 wait. I thought, I thought we had an arrangement or something. Wasn't there no, that, some kind no, of No, no, like... no, not for the ship, the friendship bill. Oh, oh, well, fair the, enough. Yeah, I'll continue paying yeah. my monthly fee for that. You know, exactly. I, I, I get, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it, yeah. Doesn't perfect. come cheap, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, goodbye, paid See friend. Ya. Time for more cards. Here we go, here we go. And I'm going to run through some of the uh, the Delve cards, all the Delve cards, in fact, that, that change the difficulty of your dungeon because they're all kind of similar. So we, we did one here. We did Curious Advance. That is the basic one. It only increases your Delve by five. After that, we have our first uncommon card, Deeper We Go. This raises your Delve by 10, but you can see the, 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 the side effect, the cost of it is a little bit more too. So it has, uh, what was it? Uh, creates one clank and creates one hazard that red with the exclamation point that is your hazard symbol and you can see it generates one hazard so you're gonna if you want to go if you want to go deeper you're gonna have to pay pay a little bit more the third one is called what lies beneath as a reminder permanent cards you can only have a permanent card in your deck once so if you want a total of for instance if you want to go to like level two you know difficulty 20 or delve 20 right now you're gonna need like a what lies beneath and a curious advance so you're gonna you're gonna need a combination of these to get where you want to go this one that you know goes up to 15 and you get two clank and one hazard generated and then the final one by the way that was a rare card there with the blue border this is a legendary card it's gonna it's going to give you 20 delve, which is a huge value. That alone will probably take you to level three or, or have your artifact likely be at level three. It's going to generate uh, one clank. And then the effect here is on artifact acquired. So when you pick up your artifact, it will generate one clank right then. So that's actually not bad. You'll notice this is a legendary card and kind of powerful. I actually toned down like it's, it's actually less of a penalty. You really want this card if you're an end game player. But notice right there quest you do not buy this card in the frost ember shop you must complete a quest in the dungeon to attain it and then the last card here this again is another delve but this one's a little bit interesting here okay this one is called one shot in the dark it raises your delve by 10 which is the same as deeper we go however this card is ethereal you see this little little ghosty symbol up there in the corner that means it's an ethereal card and if you guys remember ethereal cards they're used once and then they're destroyed. You can only play them for one run, but you'll also notice that this one is bought with coins. And again, don't pay attention to the numbers. Just, this is a card that you can buy in the shop. So essentially what you can do here is pay a little bit of a coins to have one dungeon go deeper than you would normally go because maybe you don't have these cards. Maybe you've only got this card and this card, but you really want to try to get down to like level three or four. You can buy this card. It'll probably be very cheap, but you you could buy this card and for one run get a much deeper delve value then let's just keep it going we got a lot of cards to get through here here's some more permanent cards we've got stone skin okay this one again permanent card so it's going to grant you resistance with a beacon effect for the entire run but you cannot get any form of jump boost and any form of speed. Speed is great because it's great for allowing you to avoid things and make your run quicker, which in effect is going to lower your hazard. And jump boost is going to be very valuable. It's going to allow you to jump to places that are going to have unique rewards associated to them that you wouldn't be able to get to without that jump boost. But resistance obviously very beneficial It'll probably allow you to take another hit or two from a ravager we have a rare card haste this one and it's straight up just draws your cards quicker i built this into the card processor knowing that i would want this card if you have this card in your deck it's a permanent all your cards are going to be pulled quicker so normally it might be like 30 seconds it might be like 24 seconds or something again i don't know what the numbers are but it'll be probably 10 or 15 percent faster that your cards will be played so this is great if you want to really have a deep run and a lot of cards in your deck and we have an uncommon card a silent runner every time speed activates you block one clank obviously huge synergy here with any cards other other cards you put in your deck that turn on that speed boost every time you part you put on that speed boost extra clank block so very interesting card to start building some interesting decks i could see i could see there being speed based or run based decks uh which would be amazing and of course we have to bring back the beast sense guys the, the art and these cards so good we got beast sense and this is a permanent card now i decided to make it permanent because i wanted its effects to be valuable every time you increase clank every time you generate clank 50 percent chance of turning on that glow effect 
to know where the nearby Ravagers are. So incredibly valuable. Again, Ravagers are on levels one and two. Generating Clank is a bad thing, but now you add a little bit of a little bit of something good to it so that you can tell where the beasts are in your vicinity. And then we got a legendary card, a glorious moment. This one is amazing. When you acquire your artifact, immediately draw three cards and play them from your deck. This is insanely powerful. Obviously the cost, ignore that. It'll probably be incredibly expensive to get this card, uh, but this is a good one, right? Boom, you play, you get that artifact, you're deep in the dungeon and three cards are immediately popped off and played. You know, you're blocking clank, you're getting speed boost, you're doing whatever. Who knows, they're all gonna be good and it's gonna help you get out of that dungeon with your artifact. Okay, let's keep it going with more cards. I love this one, it's an uncommon, it is a swagger. Going into the dungeon with a little Little bit of confidence five frost when this is played five frost embers will be dropped in the dungeon somewhere for you to pick up which is incredibly valuable but it's going to generate some clank and that's what that symbol is it will generate one clank automatically so this is a, this is a give and take there's a lot of cards that have this give and take if you confident you can generate some more clank your reward is more embers will be there for you to pick up. This is a good one. This is a good one. Brilliance, okay? This is a rare card. Whenever it's played, straight up, you just draw two more cards. So you kind of get a two for one here. This card in itself does nothing, but you get two more cards played. So you get, you get, like I said, a two for one on this one. This is a great way to expand your deck, have a larger deck and, and just really tear through the cards. Another uncommon skillful retreat. Oh, the height might be a little weird here. Hold, hold on, okay, I had to get rid of the platform there. For easier viewing, this one is skillful retreat. It's interesting. It's kind of a little bit of a gamble card. This one here says with an artifact, and that is key. This card only does what it's going to do if you already have an artifact in your possession. If you do, it will block two clank and block one hazard. That is quite a bit, especially for a, a green card, an uncommon card. But if you don't have your artifact yet, in other words, if this card is drawn early, because again, remember they're all shuffled. If this card is drawn early, it does nothing. Okay, the next two are very interesting and will appeal to the risk takers. This one is Tunnel Vision, okay? You can see it drops eight coins into the dungeon. Again, I don't know the final value. It'll be quite a bit though. However, it discards the top card from your deck. So it, the, the, whatever the next card in your deck is, it's just whoop, it goes into your it goes into your discard pile like it was never played. It's not destroyed, but it's not going to be played that game. And then we have even the riskier version. This one is crazy. Necessary sacrifices. OK, it is a rare card. It will drop. And I don't again, 20 might be too much, but it's going to drop a ton of frost numbers into the dungeon for you to explore. However, it destroys the top card in your deck, okay? That is a huge risk. Whatever the top card is, it's gone. It's not coming back. It's not gonna be in your deck, it's gone. And you don't know what card that is. So huge risk here, but the payout is potentially huge. If you get lucky and this drops, you know, a sneak or something so, something super cheap, you know, you're gonna totally make out because the, the value here of what you're gonna retain is gonna be way more probably than the cost of a cheap card. Uh, however, who knows, you know, you, you, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want one of these destroyed. Keeping it going, we've got a second wind, okay? The guy's taking a little, a little breather there. This one activates speed and regeneration, okay? The length at which that regeneration is active, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's gonna give you a full heal or what, but putting those two on is gonna allow you to really get out of the trouble wherever you are and regain some health if you've lost it. Pretty good stuff. We've got bounty, okay? This one is interesting because normally when you see this two coin icon and we we'll probably need to take this out to make it clear but normally when you see that that icon it means it's dropping two coins somewhere in the dungeon however this card when played it just puts the two coins directly into the victory chest the victory chest is in the room that you go to to hand in your artifact at the end so it's already there waiting for you you don't need to find it so this will be a smaller value but it's guaranteed money if you succeed the run. And of course, we've got to have Flea with extra Flea. <laughs> I love this card. This one, again, if you have an artifact, it's going to block two, uh, block two Clank and grant speed. So it gets you out of that dungeon quick. And I mean, we love the name. How about some smash and grab? This one, the icons are a little bit messed up on this one. That's okay. We'll get that fixed. But this one here, it's another one of those trade-offs. It's going to drop a lot of coins in the dungeon for you to find at the cost of generating one Clank. Look at that art, so good.
Okay, I can finally show you what I've been working on all day. Now, this is a crazy episode. We are all over the place here. I do apologize for that. <laughs> but check it out. Okay, this I'm excited about this. The entrance to decked out is getting better. I showed you all this. You sleep in here. You do your thing. You put your 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 deck of cards right there. And then a, uh, what are these things? Uh, Minecart appears right there okay boom you sit in the mine cart and uh you know what let me show you with with a better camera here of what you're about to witness Okay, now let's do it the real way, and I did add, well, you'll hear. I added a little familiar sound to the ride. And check out, look what it just did. Activator rail through the corner. Oh, oh, hi there, hi there. I'm not doing anything with the extra mine carts yet. We gotta we got work on that. Come here, where are you? Over here. But yeah, the tunnel comes down here and then boom, it drops you off right here in the dungeon with seemingly no way that you actually got in here and you're ready to start your adventure. The doors are broken right now. But there's a lot going on here and I just, I wanted to set the, kind of the vibe of like you're going, you're descending into the earth, into the frosty, cold abyss, really setting the mood for level one, all this icy stuff. You fall down this huge, like, chasm or i guess break in the earth here whatever you want to call it i'm not sure uh and let me show you let me show you what we got going on here like up here it kind of opens up a little bit i think there's i have an i have some ideas right if you guys are on the on the twitch streams you know what kind of ideas we're dealing with here what i want to do um i might put something up here i'm not sure i intentionally opened it up a little bit we may still terraform or whatever but but it opens up intentionally here just just you know there might we might do some things there and then down here we might do something which i'm excited about i got this little room back here it's not done yet but what i'm thinking is when you land Boom, right here. Obviously, this is power. You're up against a solid block. You start going as you saw. Uh, however, I want to trigger that. Maybe maybe there's a tripwire hook going across. I'm not sure. But either way, I'm thinking it'll be fun if there was a Ravager in a minecart right here. And the second you land and start going, he's right on your butt. He is right on your butt. And you can you can feel his snorts and his, his roars coming right at you. I think that would be fun. But I don't want to do it every time. I think I want to do it like... 10% of the time or something. I want, I want it to surprise you when it happens because you're not expecting it kind of thing. And then at the end, the Ravager, of course, would just, you know, veer off to the side or something like that. I'm not sure. We'll figure that part out. Uh, he goes off and then recycles for another chance that it might, you know, encounter another unsuspected adventurer. But I really like how I reused the, you guys heard the audio, right? It's the same uh, music disc we're playing from my nether tunnel, that icy tunnel, I figured what, what perfect sound then icy wind cage blowing and everything. We got the lighting and everything just right in here. Obviously there's just like a ton of uh, of lichen everywhere, but it's all behind you. You don't even see it and the lighting is just great down here. Love this ride. And of course the best part is that when the ride's done, you're just in the dungeon and there's no door. There's no, there's no retreating. You gotta go. Back with more cards. We got a couple permanents here that we got. The first one is healing potion. Absolutely love the art on this one. It looks so good. This one's very simple. Grants a healing potion, grants a potion of instant health at the entrance. So right before you enter the amazing double doors, there will be a healing potion waiting for you on the ground. And this one, very similar. This one is a rare though, okay? This one, boom, suit up. Grants iron boots, iron pants, iron chest plate at the entrance waiting for you but it is an ethereal you get this card for one run you're gonna have way more armor than you normally would this is the card you want to use if you're really trying to make a super run and you really want to go all out throw this in your deck get a full suit of armor and you're gonna be much more protected this one is one of my favorites this is vanish in a puff of smoke this one is great okay here's what happens it is an ethereal okay that that alone makes it you, you know you know it's gonna be good with the with the ethereal but it removes 
removes all your clank. This essentially resets your clank to what it was at zero, basically no clank. And it blocks an additional, the next three clank, it also blocks. Again, incredibly powerful ethereal. This is a one run only, okay? And it's from a quest. You're not buying this one with frost numbers. You're gonna have to do something in the dungeon to get this card. And the last cards here, I've saved these for the end because they're kind of interesting. They introduce a new concept called focus okay now focus is it doesn't do anything it's basically just a counter okay so we got years of monk training shout out to the stream you know what that's all about all right this one all it does is it generates two focus okay so that's it just generates two focus again this is a quest item that's a good card right there it's a rare okay Focus is something you want to accumulate because there's cards that build focus. Like here's another one here, Smarter by the Step. Every time you generate Clank, 33% chance, again, that my number is probably gonna change, 33% chance of gaining one focus. So you have your focus generators in your deck here. Another simpler generator here, Meditate. This card will be easier to come by. It's an uncommon. It generates one focus and also drops a Frost Ember, maybe maybe a couple Frost Embers, who knows, into the dungeon for you. Eventually, though, you're going to want to do something with all this focus you're generating. And we have one so far. There's going to be more coming. This one here is called Clarity, okay? This card here. For each focus that you've built up, it blocks one hazard and blocks one clank. And then your focus is reset. So it wipes it all out, but gives you some bonus. So you can see how there's obvious incredible synergy between these cards here. And you want to, you know, am I going to generate? How many, how many closers do I want to put in my deck? How many generators do I want to? I don't know when they're going to get drawn. If we get the, if we get the, the focus finisher first, that does us no good. So we want to try and strategically balance the deck to have the right amount of focus generation and focus like consumption and then cash in. And again, there's going to be many more of these. There'll probably be more focus generators that will also have sidekicks with other effects or something like that. But there's also going to be more uh, focus closers that are going to do some pretty awesome stuff for you for each focus that you've acquired. And there you have it, guys. These are the official kind of wave one cards that we're gonna be launching the game with. I am incredibly excited by them. What I wanna hear from you guys is, what do you think? What cards do you like? What cards do you think are too weak? What cards do you think are too strong? And again, you know, the numbers are all going to change. So don't jump to any massive conclusions. But I'd love to hear your feedback on some of the cards that really stuck out in your head of like, this is too good. This is too bad. This is great. Or that's horrible. Any of that stuff. I'd love to hear your feedback. And guys, I should also mention, I mean, it just doesn't even fit into this episode. But I also got a chance to play a Beef's amazing card game. There's the guy back there. I played this against Azuma. And if you want to watch it, it, it's a long match. I'm going to put the whole thing, mostly uncut, on my second channel, Tango Tech 2. Get over there and uh, subscribe if you haven't. I would appreciate it. We upload all the Twitch streams there and all whatever alternate content. It always goes on that channel. And this is a perfect thing to put over there. So if you want to watch me play Azuma and Beef's Game, Head over there, follow the links, do the thing that you know how to do. And that is going to do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you're excited about the cards we revealed today. I hope you're excited about Decked Out because I know I definitely am. Come on, Dor. You going to work now? There we go. Decked Out is, is coming along. It's coming along, and I'm excited. The end is in sight, even though we still got a lot left to go.